On injecting the coxofemoral joint, the animal is placed in lateral recumbency with the femur approximately perpendicular to the spine. The landmark for injection is the proximal aspect of the greater trochanter. In some animals, locating this structure can be difficult. Here are two ways to help locate the greater trochanter. With fingers flattened, palpate along the femur proximally until you reach a bony prominence. Alternatively, lateral to the anus there is a bony prominence, the tuber ischium. Cranial to this is a depression. This is where the sciatic nerve courses. Continue cranially and you'll find another bony prominence. This is the greater trochanter. To find the joint, lay several fingertips along the greater trochanter and walk them towards the spine until your index finger falls off of the trochanter. Determining the end of the greater trochanter can be difficult, either due to obesity or advanced pathology. Having the assistant gently raise and lower the stifle while you palpate can really help with this. Once you have found the end of the trochanter, have your assistant gently lower the stifle. The joint capsule extends from the acetabular rim to the end of the articular cartilage. In a 40-pound dog, this space may be half a centimeter wide when the femur is parallel to the table. By simply lowering the stifle, you may double the size of your target. You can also have your assistant apply some gentle traction to the stifle. That is, pull the femur away from the pelvis. In an anesthetized or heavily sedated animal, you can distract the joint an appreciable amount. With your index finger off the end of the greater trochanter, insert your needle around the middle of your index fingernail. Take care not to poke your glove with the needle. The needle should be inserted perpendicular to the skin and in line with the greater trochanter. As you can see, the trochanter points directly towards the hip joint. The needle should be inserted in one smooth, continuous motion. Avoid jerky stop-and-go motions. Advance the needle until you feel yourself pop into the joint or you hit something solid. If you feel the needle fall into the joint, go ahead and inject. If not, you'll need to walk the needle into the joint space. Always walk the needle in the same plane as greater trochanter. If you were to walk cranial or caudal, but the tip were on the pelvis dorsal to the acetabulum, you would never cross the joint space. It is best to begin walking towards the trochanter. If you were to walk dorsal, the needle could fall off of the pelvis, and this would mimic the feeling of falling into the joint. Important note. You do not have to fall into the joint to actually be in the joint space. Falling into the joint space is nice because the unique feel makes you very confident your needle is in the correct location. Additionally, you are more likely to aspirate synovial fluid. However, the needle is very likely to scratch against articular weight-bearing cartilage. A better place to inject the joint is up on the cartilage not covered by the acetabulum. This is articular cartilage, thus in the joint space, but it is non-weight-bearing, thus less likely to do any lasting harm. The downside is you do not have the feeling of popping into the joint, and you are rather unlikely to aspirate synovial fluid.